Well, okay, my friends, start right off with the shocker du jour. From the future of the skies to the history of the Earth, scientists believe the streaming or steaming springs of Yellowstone National Park may help us understand how life adapted to an oxygen-filled world millions of years ago. Scientists analyzed the genes of microorganisms living in low and high oxygen thermal springs, finding they evolved differently to withstand their environment. Scientists say they believe this evolution is similar to how more complex beings adapted to life before and after what they call the Great Oxidation Event, when Earth's atmosphere shifted from nearly non-existent oxygen levels to the 20% we breathe today. All right. Did you hear what he just said? There was almost no oxygen. And then today it's like 20% oxygen in the atmosphere. How did that happen and how did that affect life or did life affect that? We're going to talk about that. And Yellowstone, I just did a bit of a little research on Yellowstone because they had just done a, a survey on where the magma flows under Yellowstone's surface. And it's not one big magma pool. They discovered these separate little zones, which are, I, I did a video on it before, but we have to go over it again because it just didn't, it just bounced off of everybody apparently because I never heard anything from anybody about it. Okay, my friends, as always, shocker du jour or your money back. That is Yellowstone. That is under the ground, radar penetrated, and I believe that is a creature's body, lungs, throat, and some extras up here and other organs, all of these are loaded with magma because that's what happens to organs when they're still completely saturated with biology and encapsulated in mud. That's what happened here. That's Yellowstone. Okay, my friends, the question is, will I ever run out of shocker du jour? And the answer is no. They will go on forever because we live in a completely, totally, 100% different universe than we did 15 years ago. Now, what am I looking at today? Will Yellowstone erupt soon? They're worried about the volcanic activity at this caldera out in Yellowstone. So what do they do? They want to map what's under the ground, see if they can find where this magma exists. They're expecting to find one gigantic pool of magma. So they have, they have these devices that can, they're pretty sophisticated. Let me show you what they have to say about this, because they get in pretty deep here, and I mean deep. And when you see what this is, whoa, I didn't think I could be shocked any more than I am at this. It just keeps compounding. Every day is just more and more of the same and just better evidence. And it's still totally, de basically denied or it, it just like hidden from. To me, as a scient scientist type person, I just, my mind is, is distressed over this, over the, this course of time. How could... People just not take an interest in this. This is what kills me. What do I show you what I have to show you? This is going to blow your mind. And it's, it, it supports exactly what I've been saying. There's nothing but biology. And Yellowstone area, that whole west out there, is a gigantic, monstrous creature. And under this caldera is literally the chest, including the lungs, the, you know, the trachea, maybe even the tonsils. <laughs> Okay, my friends, let's dig through this together. What are they talking about? And who is doing the talking? Well, this is Smithsonian Magazine. And um, they are doing the talking about Yellowstone. And what are they talking about? Well, will Yellowstone erupt? Is it going to explode? I mean, the thing is bubbling away for forever. No, scientists are using new techniques to find out. So what have they done? Using magnetotellurics, I'll explain that shortly, because that's all part of dipole electron flow theory as well. The researchers produce a detailed picture of the magma 
beneath Yellowstone, offering insights into a distant future of possible volcanic activity. So they, I believe, were expecting to see a vast magma chamber, semi-homogenous, sort of just all the same magma laying around in there, just bubbling from here and there, poking up in different spots, but they did not find that. Okay, this, this is extreme shocker du jour. I'm going to read you their article. So, what did they find? They didn't find what they expected, trust me. This is the geyser area, Imperial Geyser, one of the many hydrothermal features that draw visitors to Yellowstone National Park. Is the whole thing going to explode? They have many of these things. Why, Why is it all bubbling here and there? No. Each year, Yellowstone Park attracts millions of visitors eager to see its explosive geyser, steaming hot springs, bubbling mud pots, the famous natural landmarks result from the park's unique geology. It sits atop an active supervolcano, which has produced three large explosive eruptions in the last 2.1 million years. How do they know that? Let's go on from here. The most recent eruption, Yellowstone, took place 70,000 years ago. How do they know that? When thick lava bur burbled, burbled, <laughs> bubbled, I guess they mean, up to the surface and flowed across the landscape. The last major explosion occurred around 631,000 years ago on Thursday afternoon, cloudy, anyway, creating a massive, massive crater known as the Yellowstone Caldera. This is, this is all 100% guesses. And I have ways to date these things based on the Triassic era, which is the three layers, the red bed, the gray clay, the black cap. What this sits on, over or under, determines its age. And I can, and of that I am absolutely certain. Now, many curious onlookers have wondered whether and when Yellowstone might next erupt. So the scientists are using new techniques to help answer these questions. A new analysis published last week in the journal Nature suggests Yellowstone is unlikely to experience another big eruption, at least not anytime soon, because the magma lurking beneath its surface is split across a web of distinct chambers. Yes, it is. Due to the large total amount of magma present, Yellowstone will remain volcanically active forever, basically, but nowhere in Yellowstone do we have regions that are capable of eruption. That's what they're saying. It has a lot of a magma, but the magma is not connected enough. Listen, wait till you see this. This just shocked me. I read all kinds of technical manuals and, you know, latest scientific things, but I never expected to see this. Past research suggested a broad layer of magma just everywhere underneath Yellowstone, but the new findings contradict that. There are these segregated regions where magma is stored across Yellowstone. Instead of having one sort of large reservoir, Bennington adds to Fox Weather's Angeli Gabrielle. Look at what they found. Look at that. Is there a biologist in the house? Is there an anatomist in the house? Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> Those are two lungs connected to the throat. And this could be his ears or his, you know, tonsils or something. I don't know. And this is some other little organs up in here that have turned into melt. They call it melt. They call it this basaltic melt. So this they're saying is basalt, but it's liquid. It's magma. This other one is uh, rhyolitic, which is the red, which is another type of material melted. So this organ, it, in my mind, lungs are basically full of blood and a lot of um, connective tissue because it does that all the time. And they call that basalt. Maybe. In this case, rhyolitic melt, 
which is just, I'm not sure what organs these are, but it's, uh, I'll have to look into chemistry of that. And then you got transition basaltic to rhyolitic. So this one here is, is half and half. And then you got hydrothermal system way up here is the bubbling up. <laughs> if that's not lungs, I don't know what to say. You get a doctor, get anybody. This is insanity to just keep walking around in circles. And you look at the landscape here, it's absolutely stunningly large the creatures that were here. I mean, you, you, look at this. This is out in this area. This is just the layers. This is like some kind of basement layer of skin, I would think. And all of it is washed off and left the, the underlaying stuff that can pull this way and that way and come back to a nice flat skin. I'm not sure you could see that in the last shot, but this is nothing more than, it's some kind of tissue that covers the body. It's, it could be inside, of, wrapped around an organ. It's some kind of membrane or basement layer of skin, something like that. 100% biology, yeah, of that there is no question. This stuff is all over the place out there out west. Look at that. That is not just an accidental... I don't know, they call it, have, they have so many ridiculous names for this because they can't, you know, they call it pillow basalt. No, this is not pillow basalt. That's some kind of a membrane. And this, all this red stuff is not just red stuff. That's literally bloody tissue and this is bloody blood. The geologists refuse to examine this because they cannot explain it. And the explanation is so overwhelming that they, it's just bounces. All right, I think I probably covered enough for today. But I, as I show you, 100% of every single thing I'm showing you here, whatever's in space, whatever here is on Earth, all of the even mud and everything is just eroded blood. Now, I, I, this, this guy here did a fabulous video. Look at this. This is not what you think, but it's so more than what you think. It's, I think, if, it's, if I'm right, this is just outrageous. But... I think I'm right. Now, I will show you this in my next video, and um, I'm going to try to explain. Because they always ask, oh, how did this happen? Well, how did, and I mean, this is crazy looking. It looks like a dragon's head, obviously. And it is not. I, well, to me, it's not. Well, I'm, I'm sure of that. And I'll show you why I say that in my next video. So stay tuned. And um, I forget what the... He, he did a really good job. Nice guy, too. Hold on one second. All right, here's the guy, Topo Traveler. And here's where he is. And this, I, I'm seeing, I know what I'm seeing here, and I'm pretty damn sure what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing. You see all these little bumps here? Those aren't plants. They're just little bumps. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Now, these are the kind of things I would like to have him go up and look at what these things are up close and, and so forth. And I think I've seen enough in this video to know exactly what, well, I'm, I'm hoping. And I'm pretty sure where he was in that little pocket there with the, what looked like a dragon's head is something that I will explain in my next video because, again, it's over the top. So uh, another shocker du jour coming up. All right, thank you. I love you all. Time we all pay attention to reality. It's, uh, it's a stunning world once you open your eyes wide enough to see what the world really is. And the universe. This is not just one thing here, one thing there. It's one thing. All right, let's analyze each statement he's making. All right, here goes. The history of the Earth. Scientists believe the... All right, the history of the Earth. If what I have been saying about mud fossils and the... the effect of almost being impacted by Venus is true. The history of that we've been taught is just nowhere near true. So we're starting right away with the history. I don't agree with that. Streaming or steaming springs of Yellowstone National Park may help us understand how life adapted to an oxygen filled world. All right. So now he's saying, how did life adapt? 
to an oxygen-free world, or almost no oxygen at all. Well, I say that the reason that there was no oxygen was because we got hit by Venus, almost. It burned literally everything, it combusted and burnt up the oxygen in the atmosphere. So there was virtually no oxygen left. But there was a lot of bacteria and a lot of enzyme activity from these dying creatures that were left here. And they were so enormous that the parasites and the little tiny things living inside their body did not die in these floods and these boiling waters. They were protected because they were in the fluids inside the body of these creatures. The inside of these bodies was so enormous they could have whales and gigantic creatures living in them. They would never even know about it. I'm talking huge creatures. So that is where these bodies are and that is what Yellowstone is, is as I have shown you, a creature's body.